Hello students this is professor dakne sir welcome you all once again in our online lecture series of system programming and operating system this is our lecture number 6 in the unit number 3 and uh, as all of you know we are discussing about the phases of compiler already three phases we have completed now today we are going to discuss about the fourth phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generation now this diagram is uh, very much familiar to all of you as from the first phase of compiler we are referring this uh, diagram so as all of you know the compilation process consists of the different phases of compiler when the source program is being compiled what different operations being get performed on that source program until it is get converted into the machine language that all the processing we are discussing as a part of the phases of compiler now as you can see in this different figure each phase take the input from the previous stage and produce some output and give it to the next phase of compiler so up till now these three phases we have finished lexical syntax and the semantic analysis now we are studying the fourth phase of compiler that is intermediate code so as all of you know the in the lexical analysis recognition of token is done output of the lexical analysis is a token which is given as a next to the next phase of compiler as a syntax analyzer then syntax analyzer role is to check the syntax of the expression of the sentence by producing the parse tree of the syntax tree. so after production of the parse tree syntax analyzer give that parse tree as a input to the next phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer okay then third phase is the semantic analysis which uh, role being performed by the semantic analysis and uh, along with the semantic analysis technique being utilized the syntax directed translation so main role performed by the semantic analyzer to check whether a sentence is a meaningful or not whether it is a semantically correct or not and generation of annotated parse tree for that and checking the meaning of that particular sentence that is the role performed by the semantic analyzer then semantic analyzer generate the output as annotated parse tree or modified parse tree or decorated parse tree and give it as a input to the fourth phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generation and today we are going to discuss about what exactly is the intermediate code generation now this is the uh, figure you can see this is the overview of what we have discussed up till now and what we are going to discuss in today lecture so semantic analyzer here you can see generating the modified parse tree and giving it as a input to the next phase of compiler that is our intermediate code generation and here you can see the output generated by the intermediate code generator is nothing but the intermediate code and next to it is the remaining phases of the compiler okay so what exactly is the intermediate code what is its need and what are the types of the intermediate code that all the things today we are going to discuss so intermediate code generator uh, as a one of the component of the compiler that used to translate the source code into the intermediate code now why this particular code generated by the intermediate code generator is generator is called as the intermediate code the reason behind that is this is the code which is between the source code and the machine code that machine code finally we are going to generate so as this is the code between the machine uh, source code and the machine code that is the reason this code is called as a intermediate code intermediate in the sense uh, something which is between the two things okay and uh, so that is the reason here i have mentioned the intermediate code lies between the high level language and the machine language for example you are writing the c program so c program is your source code and uh, for that c program code the intermediate code will be generated and using that intermediate code finally the machine code will be generated so between this source code between this source code and the machine code there is a intermediate code will be generated in the 
fourth phase of compiler okay now what exactly this intermediate code contain now intermediate code contain all the uh, abstract information of all the previous phases of compiler abstract information in the sense summary of three phases of the compiler previous three phases of compiler means what processing we have done on the source program in previous three phases summary of all that phases is being contained in the intermediate code okay so that is the reason here i have mentioned the intermediate code contain the abstract information of all previous phases of compiler now why it is required to be generated and if the intermediate code will not get generated will it affect on the output will it affect on the finally generated machine code that we are going to see now why it is required to be generated now what happen compiler when generating the machine code now in the first three phases compiler has done compiler has done the multiple processing on the source program like lexical analysis syntax analysis and the semantic analysis okay now during the back end of compiler back end processing of the compiler where code optimization and the code generation will be performed in the back end of compiler that is our fifth and sixth phase okay now during the final code generation compiler again has to refer to the front end of the compiler front end in the sense compiler again and again has to refer to the what processing has been done in the previous three phases of compiler okay now if the intermediate code will not get generated then compiler in the back end when the compiler is generating the machine code in the back end of compiler or during the code optimization compiler has to again and again process these three phases compiler has to again and again process the source code again and again uh, in the lexical syntax and the semantic analysis okay but if the intermediate code is generated then compiler don't have to process this source code again and again compiler for the compiler there is no need to read the source program again and again if the intermediate code is generated because when the compiler is generated the when when the compiler is generating the machine code in the back end of compiler in the fifth and sixth phase then compiler will simply refer to the intermediate code compiler will not refer to the all the previous phases because intermediate code contain all the information which is being done while processing the source code in these previous three phases of compiler that is the reason here i have mentioned because of intermediate code compiler don't have to read the source program again and again as intermediate con intermediate code contain all the required information from analysis phase of compiler so these three phases we are referring at as referring as a analysis phase and remaining phases are considered as a synthesis phase means remaining in the sense code optimization and the final code generation so when the code optimization and final code generation is being done by the when the compiler is doing the code optimization and final code generation that time compiler don't have to read this source code again and again compiler don't have to refer these three phases again and again reason behind that the the, the particular abstract information summary of all these particular uh, processing of three phases is contained in the intermediate code and that is the reason here i have mentioned because of intermediate code compiler don't have to read the source program again and again as intermediate code contain all the re required information for the from the analysis phase of compiler so when synthesis of source code is happening synthesis in the sense code optimization and the code generation that time compiler only refer to the intermediate code only compiler will not refer to the these three phases because whatever the processing has been done in these three phases that is already contained in the intermediate code so if intermediate code is not generated the machine code will not be incorrect but the time required to generate that machine code will, will be more why the time required to generate the machine code will be more if the intermediate code uh, will not get generated because if the intermediate code will not generate it, the compiler during the code generation and the code optimization again and again he has to refer to the this previ previous phases and while it is referring to this previous phases the time will be more and if the time has to be reduced 
during the compilation process during the code generation process then intermediate code has to be generated okay that is the reason behind why the intermediate code need to be generated okay so same thing i have mentioned here if ic is not generated the machine code will not be incorrect but time required to generate that machine code will be more and if the time required will be more the efficiency of the compiler will reduce because during the synthesis phase that is during the back end processing of the program compiler also need to refer to the analysis and the source program analysis phases and the source if ic is generated then there will be no need to refer to the analysis phase again and again because during the code generation and code optimization that is the back end processing of program the compiler will simply refer to the ic so that is the reason intermediate code has to be generated so here i have mentioned in this phase that is the intermediate code generation phase what input the intermediate code generated get the intermediate code generated get the input from the previous phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer so here i have mentioned in this phase as an input the compiler will give modified parse tree and as a output after converting it to the intermediate code will generate the three address so intermediate code get the particular input from the previous phase that is the semantic analyzer so semantic analyzer generating get the modified parse tree as output that will be given as the input to the intermediate code generator okay and then intermediate code generation will be done now intermediate code there are the different types of the intermediate code are there like there is a syntax tree also the one of the kind of intermediate code then directed a cyclic graph jack dag directed a cyclic graph is also the one of the type of the intermediate code and third and most important and uh, which is generally utilized is the third kind of intermediate code that is the tag so here tag stands for the three address tree so in this uh, fourth phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generation we are focusing on the three address code generation as a intermediate one so onwards we will discuss about the what exactly is a three address code as a intermediate code okay so three address code as a tag it is the one of the type of the intermediate code and which is easy to generate and can be easily converted into the machine okay now why this particular code is referred as a three address code okay that we are going to discuss okay so when the intermediate code generator generating the ic as a tag three address code so the address code from the name only you can understand why this is referred as a three address code because it contain the at most three addresses what at most three addresses in the sense it contain the at most three operands it contains what at most three operands and one operator okay to represent the particular expression which is a part of source program intermediate code generator generated the intermediate code as a three address code and that three address code is what it will contain the at most three addresses means at most three operands and one operator that is the reason this particular ic is called as a three address code okay so here i have mentioned tag make the use of three addresses that is the three at most three operands and one operator to represent the expression from source code and the value computed at each instruction is stored in the temporary variable generated by the compiler so during the three address code generation as a ic multiple number of temporary variables are being utilized by the compiler okay and compiler decide the order of evaluation order of operation so when the final code generation will be done by the compiler in which order the final code or the machine code will be generated that machine code will be generated according to the order of intermediate code okay now what exactly this three address code with example we will see now let's see some more details regarding the three address code now i hope all of you understood what exactly the three address is why it is called as a three address code three address code tag because it contain the at most three addresses and the one operator understood so when the three address code has to be generated 
then there has to be some rules we have to follow two important rules are there when the pre address code for the particular expression has to be generated first rule has to be follow in the thing but the rule of precedence of operator okay what is this that we will discuss in the example so you just keep in mind rules what rule has to be follow the precedence order of the operator priority of the operator in the sense what if there are the different kind of operator in your expression like plus minus plus division then plus is having the less precedence as compared with the multiplication so this order has to be keep in mind while generating the pre address code for particular expression so that is the first rule second rule gender the tag for the highest precedence operator first so in your expression plus and the multiplication is there then you have to generate first the pre address code for the expression which is being surrounded by uh, which is being uh, which is being surrounded by the multiplication operator okay so let's see that in the example now as you know uh, the working out the previous phases of compiler we will just recap and then we'll come to the pre address code generation so in the previous lecture if you see we are uh, dealing with the expression for example x is equal to a plus b into the 50 where x a b are the operands and these are being all being considered as a float for example and 50 is a integer here okay now in the first phase of compiler we have seen result of the first phase of compiler will be as follows so first phase of compiler will do what it will generate the different kind of tokens or recognition of token so in this expression x is identifier this symbol is assignment symbol a is identifier plus is addition symbol b is identifier star is a multiplication symbol and this 50 is also the integer number okay so lexemes and the tokens will be generated like this for example x is a first identifier id comma 1 then assignment symbol then a is the second id then plus symbol and then b is the third identifier then star and the 50 as a number or the integer so this is the processing done by the a lexical analyzer and this is this particular processing output will be given to the next phase of compiler that is nothing but our syntax analyzer so in the syntax analyzer we have seen that is the second phase of compiler will check whether the expression that is the x is equal to a plus b into 50 is syntactically correct or not by generating the syntax tree and then it send that syntax tree as a input to the semantic analyzer that is our third phase of compiler now in the third phase of compiler what will happen third phase of compiler will check whether that expression is semantically correct or not as we know x a b are the float but 50 is the integer we know the what role performed by the semantic analyzer is what main role performed is nothing but the checking the type compatibility okay type checking and checking whether the sentence is uh, meaningful or not so here then semantic analyzer will convert because 50 type of the 50 is what integer that has to be converted into the float so semantic analyzer will convert that into the 50.0 as a part of the time type compatibility operation and send that to the next phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generator okay so this is the output generated by our third phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer now what happen in the fourth phase of compiler that's the intermediate code generation that we have to discuss okay so here in the fourth phase that is the intermediate code generation for the this expression we will see how the intermediate code will be generated for this expression okay so this is the uh, intermediate code generated for this for this expression okay this or this both of these uh, intermediate codes are correct and these intermediate codes are being referred as a pre address code as a tag as i said pre address code contain the at most three operands and the operator okay so for this expression the pre address code will be generated like this that is as i said different kinds of temporary variable were utilized while generating the pre address code as a intermediate code okay so here we take the t1 as a temporary variable and now as i said we have to follow the some rules while generating the pre address code as a intermediate code. so precedence will be given to the 
conversion first okay so here that's why we write t1 equal to the into float 50 okay what into float 50 means convert the 50 into the 50.0 okay so first preference will be given to this part okay first preference will be given to this part then another second temporary variable we utilize t2 equal to id3 into t1 okay now second preference will be given to this sub expression b into 50 now in the lexical analyzer we have seen b is b is given the identifier number 3 so that is the reason t1 t2 equal to id3 id3 is what b id3 into t1 t1 is what t1 is nothing but the 50.0 okay then again next the free address code will generated for this whole part that is t3 equal to id2 plus t2 so t3 equal to id2 is what id2 is nothing but the a okay t3 equal to id2 plus t2 t2 is what t2 is nothing but this part okay this second part okay and then lastly id1 equal to the t3 means whatever the result we have got here that we are going to store in the id1 and id1 to the id1 we are assigning the t3 because t3 contain the processing of all previous things okay so this is the one way of generating the pre address code so in this uh, different uh, statement you can see there is a no there is a uh, at most three operands we utilize here you can see uh, in this expression two operands we utilize two and here only the one so while generating the pre address code you pre address code you have to keep in mind you should not utilize more than three operands and one operator okay so pre address code can be generated like this or it can be generated like this also so this is also the correct t1 equal to into float 50.0 t2 equal to b into t1 instead of id3 you can directly utilize the variable name also t3 equal to a plus t2 for id2 we have utilized a here okay and x is equal to t3 so you may utilize the uh, you may give the name to the variable as a id1 id2 id3 likewise or you can directly also utilize the variable itself okay so this is nothing but the three address code generation for this particular expression okay so for this expression we have got this three address code this or this any any one of this is you can utilize both of these are correct okay now while generating the three address code okay we must focus on the what is the original statement given and accordingly three address code should have to be generated okay so for this expression okay you have generated this particular three address code okay then now we have seen what is the three address code what is its need why it is to be generated and its types and uh, with example as a three address code we have seen now there are the different representation of three address code also for simplicity for code so that now main reason behind generating the three address code or the intermediate code is what the machine code generation process will become simpler will become efficient okay so three address code can be implemented or represented as a record with the different addresses field and there are the different representation of three address codes are there so there are the three important representation of three address codes are there you can see here representation of three address code as a code wrapper representation of three address code as a triple or representation of three address code as a indirect triple so same thing i have mentioned in another diagram also so these are the different representation of three address code with example we will see what exactly is code wrapper triple and the indirect triple okay so in the representation of three address code first type of representation is a code wrapper now code ra code in the sense four fields okay so the code wrapper is having the four field to implement the three address code now what are the three what are the different fields the different field of code wrapper contain the name of the operator first operand second operand and the result so operator is one field second operand is a second field then 
first uh, first operand is the second field then second operand is the third field and result as a four field so there are the four fields in the representation of three address code that is the reason this representation is called as a code wrapper four fields are there that is the reason it is referred as a code wrapper okay so same thing also i have mentioned here in code wrapper representation each instruction is divided into the four fields four fields for what purpose one field for the operator two field for the operands and one field for the result okay the off field is used to represent the uh, internal node for the operation that is the operator the argument one argument two or the operand one operand two fields are represent the two operand two operands and result field contain the result that is the fourth field so why this representation is a called as a code wrapper because it contains the four field that four field you can also refer as a operator source operand one source operand two and the destination as a result field okay so as it is containing the four field that is the reason this representation is called as a code wrapper okay now let's take example one more example and then we'll see how the code wrapper triple and the indirect triple can be uh, generated for the three address code okay so here we have given the example translate the following expression into the code wrapper triple and the indirect triple so this is the expression we have given a plus b into c divided by e raised to f plus b into a this is the expression okay this expression first will be get converted into the three address code now how to convert into the three address code already i told you while converting it into the three address code we have to focus on the precedence of the operator now in this whole expression this raised to is having the highest precedence okay then multiplication then division and then plus so here we utilize the first temporary variable t1 okay so here you can see t1 equal to e raised to f this first reference first precedence highest precedence is to given to the raised to okay that is the reason here first three address code statement is t1 equal to e raised to f okay then next preference will given to this t2 equal to b into c because this multiplication is having the second precedent okay then next will be given to c divided e so t3 temporary variable generated okay and for that you can see now this expression we have related uh, uh, three address code for this expression we have done also three address code for this expression also generated this is now result of this is in result of this e raised to f is in the t1 okay result of b into a in the t2 okay okay so from this we can gen the third temporary variable will be generated as a t3 okay and t3 will write as a t2 divided by the t1 okay sorry here we have made mistake first preference will be given to the exponential okay that result will be in the t1 then now with the multiplication we have the two sub expression d into c and the b into e now when there are the two sub expression with the same uh, operator then which will be given the precedence so in this case you have to follow the left to right left to right associative okay so that is the reason first preference will given to this sub expression and the result of that will be in the t2 so t2 into the b into c understood now this expression now two expression we have related and three address code generated for them e raised to f and the b into c e raised to f result in the t1 okay and b into c result in the t2 now third temporary variable will be generated as a t3 and for that three address code will be written like this t2 divided by t1 okay t2 divided by t1 now here divided operator is there and multiplication now division and the multiplication operator are also having the same precedence so here also you have to follow the left to right associativity so first preference will be given to the this division here so that is the reason we write here t2 divided by t1 means b into c divided by a raised to f because t2 contain the b into c and t1 contain the a raised to f okay then for the remaining expression 
we generate the third uh, fourth temporary variable and then we focus on this remaining sub expression b into a okay then again fifth temporary variable generated and that will be uh, for that three address code will be generated as a, a plus t3 is this a plus t3 now t3 contain t3 contain the result of this whole expression okay t3 and that is the reason here we'll write t5 equal to a plus t3 understood and lastly now if you generate the three address code up to this only then it is also correct and if you generate the last statement also then it also it is correct lastly again temporary variable we generate t6 equal to t plus t5 plus t4 t5 is a plus t3 and t4 is a remaining part understood so t6 equal to the t5 plus t4 understood so in this way three address code for this expression will be generated Now, if you see these different statements of the three address code, in each statement you can see never we have utilized more than three op more than three operands and more than one operator. Only the here two operands, two operands, two operands, two operands, and the single operator utilize we have utilized in each of these three address code statement. Understood? Now for the generated three address, now let's see how the code wrapper can be generated for the. Uh, generated three address code. Now for this expression, we have generated this three address code, and this is the code wrapper for this three address. Now, as I said, code wrapper consists of the four main fields. That is the reason it is called as a code wrapper. First field is the operator. Second is the first source operand, our argument one. Third is the argument two or the second source operand, and last one is the region. And now one more column we have to write here. That is the location. Okay, or the position. or you can also refer to as a uh, index okay so for the first expression t1 equal to e raised to f now in this which is the operator this raised to the exponential is the operator okay so you write it in the operator column then first operand here is the e second operator is the f e f and where you are storing its result in the t1 so here under the result you write the t1 for the second expression multiplication is operator b is the first operand c is the second operand and result in the t then for the third statement multi uh, division is a operator t2 is the first operand t1 is the second operand and result in the t3 t3 then for the next t4 equal to b into a multiplication is a operator b is the first operand c is uh, a is the second operand result in the t4 then for this expression Plus is the operator A is the first operand T3 is the second operand result in the T5 understood and for the last one plus is the first or plus is the operator T5 is the first operand T4 is the second operand and result in the T6 so this is nothing but the code wrapper representation of the three address now what are the disadvantage of this code wrapper and the advantages okay disadvantage what you can see the multiple number of temporary variable has to be generated. so temporary names must be entered into the symbol table as they are created okay and if the more number of temporary variables will be generated then the size of the symbol table may be get increased and the memory requirement also be more also advantage is also there advantage is what it is a uh, simpler to understand and easy to rearrange the code okay and disadvantage is what multiple number of temporary variables has to be generated okay so this is the now let's see now we already see how to generate the code wrapper for generated triple now next we have to see how to generate the triple for the that particular code wrapper okay now triple why this representation is called as triple because it consists of the three fields okay here you can see in triple representation the use of temporary variable is avoided and instead of temporary variable we use the reference to the position okay what you use reference to the position so each instruction in the triple consists of the three fields first is operator second argument one third argument so result of the respective sub expressions are generated by the positions of the expression so we make the utilization of reference to the position in case of the triple representation okay so first you need to understand why it is called as a triple because it consists of the three fields okay operator and two operands or the two arguments 
so this is the quadrupole representation we have studied now for this quadrupole this is the triple representation generated now you can see this triple in this triple representation three fields are there operator argument one and the argument two now let's see how the triple representation can be generated for the quadrupole now for the first here, here you can see we write the exponential operator as it is then first offer uh, offer front argument one as e second argument f then for the second star as operator b as a argument one c as a argument two then for the next division as a operator now here as i said in case of the triple temporary variables are avoided okay that is one of the disadvantage of quadrupole lots of temporary variable gener uh, generated and it has to be shown in the symbol table so here we avoid the utilization of temporary variable in the triple representation so how we do that see now instead of writing the t2 in the triple we will write the position as a reference number because you can see t2 now where is the t2 here now t2 contain the result of b into c now instead of writing t2 there we write the its position number so that is the reason here we write the one now here instead of t1 we write its position number that is here is the t1 its position number is 0 and so that is the reason here we write the zero then for the next multiplication operator b as argument 1 and a as a argument then for this plus a and now here we will not write the temporary variable instead of that we will write the position number of temporary variable t3 that is the 2 that is the reason here write the 2 and for the last one here we add the plus then instead of t5 we write the position number of t5 as a 4 okay and instead of t6 sorry instead of t4 we write the position number of t4 that is the 3 here yeah. so this is nothing but the triple representation for this particular given quadrupole where in the triple what was the what were the disadvantage in the quadrupole that is the uh, multiple number of temporary variable utilized that we are avoiding here in the triple so how we are avoiding that instead of writing the temporary variable we are writing the its position as a reference number okay now our third type of representation is the indirect triple now in the indirect triple we will make more changes in the uh, previous representation that is the triple so what we are going to do in the indirect triple c so in this representation we make some uh, changes in the triple representation now, what changes we make so here we uh, make the use of one additional structure that is the array so here we make the utilization of array list as a pointer to the triple in the particular uh, order okay so here we make the utilization of array list and that array list contain the pointer so instead of position number that we have utilized in the triple here we utilize the pointer to that position okay to store the result now which will enable the optimization and which will help the machine code generation a uh, more efficient way as compared to the triple and the quadrupole okay so what changes we are making in the uh, uh, in the indirect triple representation as compared to the triple so in the triple we have make the uh, utilization of uh, position as a reference now in the indirect triple we make the utilization of array list and that array list will contain the pointer to that position reference number okay so let's see how we have done this so this is the indirect triple this is the indirect triple for this triple representation okay for this triple representation this indirect triple is being generated okay now let's see now as i said in the indirect triple representation we make the utilization of one array list and that array list will contain the pointer to the position number so this is the array list and these are the pointers we have chosen here okay so these pointers any number can be generated as a pointer here so here just as an example i have taken the pointer as a 35 36 37 38 39 40 
so these numbers can be anything it can be 100 101 102 10, like this understood and this to this position numbers these are the position numbers now to this position number we have represent we have uh, refer this position number by the this different pointers okay so instead of referring to the position number we are pointing to that position number by different pointers and that is being maintained in the this particular kind of array list okay so this is nothing but the indirect triple representation so what will happen because of that so if the pointer is representing as to the 35 directly the position number 0 will be referred and from that the particular processing result will be get uh, refer uh, while the machine code generation will be takes place so you have to just understand what uh, differences are there in different uh, representation of three address code so first we have seen the code wrapper so in the code wrapper four fields are there okay and we are making the use of temporary variable in the triple we are avoiding the utilization of temporary variable we are uh, uh, making the use of position number instead of temporary variable and in the indirect triple we are making the use of pointer to point to that position number instead of utilizing the position number itself so for that purpose we are making the use of this array list and in this array list we are making the use of these uh, different uh, pointers okay which are pointing to the different position number so which will uh, make easier uh, while referring to the different uh, result of this particular expressions okay so instead of referring to the result of this expression by position number here we are making the utilization of pointer to that position number so because of utilization of pointers accessing the uh, this particular expression and result of this expression becomes easy because of the indirect triple so out of these three quadruple triple and the indirect triple indirect triple is a uh, considered the most popular and most utilized uh, representation for the three address code so in this way the intermediate code generation phase work and uh, uh, three address code representation is done in the fourth phase of compiler now result of this fourth phase then given to the next phase of compiler that is the back end of the compiler where we will do the code optimization and the code generation okay so that further part we will study in the next lecture that is nothing but our fifth phase and the sixth phase so our fifth phase is nothing but the code optimization and sixth phase that is the last phase is nothing but the code generation okay so i hope all of you are understood the uh, fourth phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generation so next time we will discuss the remaining phases of the compiler okay thank you all of you